I'm Jim Beatty. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon at Campbell Clinic and professor of orthopedics at University of Tennessee Campbell Clinic Department of Orthopedic Surgery. I'm Fred Azar. I am a sports medicine orthopedic surgeon. I'm chief of staff of the Campbell Clinic and also a co-editor of Campbell's Operative Orthopedics and also a professor uh, in the University of Tennessee Department of Orthopedic Surgery. The first edition of Campbell's Operative Orthopedics was published by Dr. Campbell in 1939 and we are now on to the 14th edition and it's been clear through the history of the book that we worked very hard to present the most updated orthopedic procedures that are currently used throughout the world. We recognize that uh, Campbell's Operative is read globally and utilized globally and we have included the most up-to-date techniques that are currently being used in orthopedic surgery but we've also been careful to hold on to some of the procedures that are used around the world including treatment of things like tuberculosis and polio that may not be seen that very much in the United States but are seen frequently around the world and are used by orthopedic surgeons uh, globally. The book is four volumes with 43 authors, 90 chapters, uh, nearly 90 video links and we were also recognized in today's world subspecialization is very very popular and very common for both orthopedic surgeons. So in that respect these chapters are designed for the the end user who are subspecialty orthopedic surgeons for the most part, but also general, general orthopedic surgeons. And they'll find anything they want in there as it relates to procedures that they're, they're in their specific field. With the latest edition, we also are very proud that uh, our readers are able to uh, review information not only in the textbook, but also through CD, through videos that correspond to the procedures and that allows us to update the book with the most current information in the orthopedic literature and in the world. We recognize that our readers today are looking for content. They want to be able to go in and look at a procedure and get the information they have and go do the procedure. So in that respect, we have formatted the book to meet the needs of our readers today. One of the jobs we have as editors is to preserve those procedures that are done around the world but also to include those new procedures that are uh, either recently been developed or are currently uh, very much in fashion. And that job is our job as editors is to do that. We're very careful, uh, as we say in our world, not to be necessarily the first on the bandwagon or the last on the bandwagon. So that, that makes it our responsibility to include what is current and up to date, but also tried and true and will be uh, certainly appropriate for patient care. Yeah, we have to work to balance the new technology with what is safe and effective for our patients. So in that respect, we have a certain bar we have for these procedures that have been published. And when we go through the literature and we see what's out there, uh, decide whether or not it's going to be published in Campbell's Operative, uh, we have certain criteria that we use to decide whether or not to include them. One of the challenges we face with each edition is addressing the 10 orthopedic subspecialties and we work very hard to include the current procedures in each one of those surgical subspecialties. One of the common things that we hear as editors is the phrase, the Bible of orthopedic surgery. Uh, but even more important than that, uh, a number of our readers have said to us, if I only had one book or one textbook that I could use in orthopedic surgery, it would be Campbell's Operative. And I believe the reason for that is because it is so comprehensive not only with the background information regarding diseases and surgeries, but the ability to look up anything that could be used in orthopedic surgery.